Hey there, my name is Promise, and welcome to Super Fantasy Kingdom! This is a new roguelite city builder that will be releasing in 2024, though there is a demo currently available on Steam, which is what I'm playing through right now, and it's enough to give a pretty good idea for what this game is going to have to offer, and I do think there's a lot of promise. The premise of this game is you're going to be building up a small kingdom while surviving against waves of monsters, though eventually they will overwhelm you and destroy your kingdom, and you'll have to start all over. However, if you gathered up resources and built up some key infrastructure in between runs, you can get a little bit more powerful than last time, which hopefully means you survive for even longer and you just keep building upon that until you have an almost unassailable kingdom. Pretty fun idea for a game. We'll see how it turns out. Let's go ahead and jump into things. Now we do start off with one hero unit. We have to choose the knight for the demo. That You can see that there is a lot of room for additional characters to be added in at some point. And I'm starting with a fresh save file right now. I've reset my entire game progress. So you'll see that I haven't done anything to improve this character, though if we gather up some golden runs, we will be able to boost up his damage, his health, his shielding, and so on and so forth. All of that is obviously Obviously, going to be very helpful. Let's go ahead and jump into the game. All right, so this king unit is going to be kind of unimportant for you, to be honest. He doesn't really do a whole lot. He kind of wanders around and gathers stuff. What's more important is we have our knight, who's going to be defending the bridge, and then we have our kingdom, which you can see is kind of in disrepair. First thing we need to do is place down a tavern. We can go ahead and do that over here. The tavern is one place where you can send people out to go gather berries for food, and it's also where your military units are going to recuperate at night. The next thing we need to do is build up a lumber yard. I want to start chopping down some trees so I can build out my economy. Now in the top left we have only one worker currently available. I'm going to assign him to this lumber yard so we can start chopping down some of the trees. I've only got two wood at the moment and I really would like to have four. So he's going to chop that down, he's going to bring it over here, and then whenever you drop off resources, a horse is going to be dispatched from the castle to then bring it back to your primary stockpile, which is what we see happening right over here. Once that's done, we have four wood. It's, uh, we've currently hit our max. I'm gonna go ahead and spend all of that to get a house. We can have a second worker, and I'm gonna sign that second person over here to lumber as well. Now you may have heard very briefly that there was some sort of a chime up here to the north. In this area, enemies have started spawning and are wandering in toward our base. The knight here has a certain radius where he'll be able to engage upon enemies. We'll see this in just a moment as the skeleton gets close. He rushes out there and he kills it, then he goes back to his position. They'll be attacking throughout the day and the longer the game goes on, the worse this is going to get. At nighttime, they all start rushing at you really, really fast and if you ever lose your hero unit or all your units and they're able to get into the kingdom, well then you just lose the game and that sucks for you. Next thing we're gonna do, by the way, is go over here and build up a quarry. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take my workers off and put them both onto this instead start gathering up a bit of stone, because I want to upgrade my castle. With three stone, we'll be able to double up our storage. Instead of having four wood, I'll be able to have eight wood. That's important, because if I want to place down additional houses to get more workers, it's got an exponential curve. So now it's going to cost me eight wood to get the next one, then 16, then 32, right? At least I think it's 32. I haven't gotten that far, but I just kind of assume based on the trend. So you literally can't boost out your economy until you also get stone, and so on and so forth. The result being that there is a very specific build order you kind of have to follow. By the way, you can see these guys are moving faster now. There's a very specific build order you kind of have to follow, at least in the early game. I do think that the longer you play this game and the more advanced you become, the more options you'll probably have available to you, but at least at the beginning, you feel kind of railroaded to a very specific form of development. And that's going to be less attractive to some people, but if you bear through it, I think it's going to get a lot better. Anyway, we killed 11 units, no one broke through, and we get some glory. Glory is important, and I'll explain more about why later. What you would do normally next is you would then feed your units and let them go to bed, but we don't have any units. We're about to fix that, however. This old man is going to give me access to something. So let's see, an old forgotten man, blah blah blah, for free, what is he going to give me? We can get a rune scribe, we can get a cyclops, and we can get a werewolf. I like the cyclops. Let's go ahead and pick this sucker up, move you back, move you forward, and he's going to throw himself cannonball style and smash enemies. We like that. That's going to be great. All right, so I'm going to have my workers go over here and start gathering up a lot of this stone. I need the stone for the upgrade, as I was talking about, and we can talk about things like glory and stuff as soon as I do that. So let's see, we've got a couple already building up, we just need to get up to three, so now we're waiting on the horse. It's kind of weird, by the way, that you're not just waiting on your workers to do stuff, the horse delivery is also kind of important. Anyway, we can go ahead and stop with the stone, bring everything back over to lumber, go here, do the repair, and boom. All right. So now that we have this upgraded, we can have those eight storage I was talking about, so I can start working toward the next worker. Also, something you'll be able to do is expand your roads using your stone. So if I click on this button right here, we're going to see a bunch of small arrows appear. If I want to spend some stone, what we'll do is we'll expand a road out in this direction. And I'll go ahead and do that for examples right now. 
So this road's gonna expand over to this little area, and all of a sudden we have access to a new area of the map that we didn't have before. The same thing will be true in the Fog of War over this direction, it's worth trying to expand. And the cool thing is, once you've expanded roads, they stay there forever, for every run. So there's kind of a progression that naturally comes just from building out on the map. By getting access to this area, we'll now be able to uh, recruit a fighter for four stone, and this guy is gonna be another military unit we can defend ourselves with. Also, these small little plots of land right over here can be built upon in some way by using some of the gold coins we've been picking up, which we could use to level up our hero after a run, or we can spend it now so that we can start with extra wood in future runs. So the more you expand, the more progression you end up getting is basically what I'm trying to say. And if I can do that one more time over here, spend 15 gold instead of five, so it ramps up in cost drastically, we'll start with four wood, which means next run, I'll start with the ability to have two workers instead of just one. That's more resource production. It just means I'm going to get a little stronger. Now, because I have a Cyclops, I do need to get some food. So let's go ahead and pull back on the workers there, send someone to go work at the tavern. Basically, every unit you have that's not your hero is going to need to eat something at the end of the day. If you don't have any food, they're going to get upset. But if you do have some food, then they're going to start leveling up slowly, which can be helpful. Notice, by the way, that, yeah, the Cyclops just, like, lunges at these guys Hulk style. Hulk smash! Oh, come on. Boom! There we go. That's great. Yeah. I like the Cyclops. The Cyclops is fun. All right, we're maxed out on wood again. Let's go ahead and get myself another worker. We have one food. That's enough to at least take care of the whole Cyclops situation. Let's send a worker over here to gather up some stone. And with three workers, that's obviously going to make things even easier. These guys are starting to move a little bit faster. If they manage to break through, as you just saw here, they'll do some damage to your unit. As long as they don't die, you'll be okay. But you don't want to take damage. It reduces how much glory you're able to get at the end of the day. And remember, more stone and more glory means more roads, means more progression overall. All right, so we are able to get up to 15 kills. One managed to breach through. We still managed to pick up some glory regardless. Now, if I hit continue over here, you're going to see that my Cyclops is going to pick up some berries and go find some seeding. He's then going to eat that food. And depending on what food he eats, he gets some experience, right? So he's going to gain one experience right now out of the three necessary in order to level up. He's also unhappy because... Can you imagine a Cyclops wanting to eat berries? I can't. But that does mean that if you can go for better forms of food, you're going to be able to progress a little bit faster. So that obviously can be pretty helpful. All right. So what's going to be the next goal? Honestly, I'm not totally sure what my next goal is going to be. Let me think about that for a second. We could try upgrading things like, let's say, the lumber yard. Spend some stone. Get this upgraded. We'll be able to grow trees. All right. That's fine. The tavern can be upgraded if we had planks and wheat. I don't have any of that. If we had gold bars, we could get a mason to upgrade our roads and stuff. That could be kind of nice for us. Not going to worry about that right now. If we had some planks, we'd be able to repair a church. Can't do that. We don't even have any additional building plots except for room for one more house, which is going to take me 16 lumber, which I can't even fit. So this means that the next thing we have to do is start spending some of our stone in order to build out some roads. Let's go ahead and do that right here, for example. That now is going to open up another building plot. So cool, we can do that and get ourselves something like, let's say, a sawmill. It's going to take me five lumber, but I'd like to be able to go ahead and start getting some boards. Oh, looks like all the enemies are starting to wander in over here. We have some enemy death priests. Uh, that's going to be fun to deal with. I'd like to get some more military units. One thing we can do, go over here, hire that fighter. Let's go ahead and bring him in over here. I'll move the Cyclops, move you to the front. This guy has a very short range, but he can stab all enemies in a very small area, which can end up being pretty darn good for me. So I'll go ahead and keep this guy at the front and hopefully peel for anything that's getting too close to my other units. Anyway, let's go ahead and build out that sawmill I was talking about. Good. And now we can pull back on some workers and start going for some of those planks. And we dealt with all those enemies without too much of a problem. Excellent. So we go ahead and get these guys fed. And we'll move on. And looks like everyone gets a bit of experience, exactly what you would expect. I'll mostly skip this going forward, but I just want to make sure you understand how that's all going to work. By the way, before we forget, let's get over here and spend some gold. Get that extra tree. Bada boom. Alrighty. So now that we have four glory, am I able to expand some additional roads? Yes, I can do that over here. Let's go ahead and fund that expansion. So this area is now going to free up, which is great. Hello, who are you? There's a trader person over hey, here, a it. merchant who's all like, Hey, um, I need my wagon repaired. Can you spend some planks? All the more reason that I want to have some of those planks. So cool, that's fine. What else can we upgrade? If we have some gold, we can start with some extra stone. Sure. Now that I have three boards, let's go over here and we'll just go ahead and repair this so I don't have to worry about it going forward. 
and we'll meet again, is what he says. Well, eventually he'll appear and he'll have some merchanting opportunities for us. Basically, we just unlocked a new feature of the game. Enemies are starting to get a little bit stronger over here, by the way. Very concerning. Something we could do, of course, is try to start getting a lot of stone to get ourselves some walls. That boosts all of our unit stats, which would make ourselves a lot tankier. Or, of course, if we continue expanding a bit more, maybe we could find something else that'd be useful. Like, uh, let's say over here, we can go for... Yeah, we have three glory. Let's do it. We'll fund this expansion. This is going to open up a new area. And if we want to get another one, which I'll do... This unlocks the crossbowman, so I need to get myself a lot of wood, and we can hire a fourth military unit, which I'll do now, and let's go ahead and place you here, and this guy's going to start taking a few shots, and actually we're going to swap you around because I believe the crossbowman is able to, well, we haven't got this yet, we have to go to a witch. At some point, I know that the uh, crossbowman will be able to give armor to the person in front of him, but... I haven't got this unlocked yet, so we're not going to worry about that. In the meantime, he's just going to take a few more shots at these guys and start shooting things. And that's important, because there's kind of a lot of enemies coming after me all of a sudden. Holy crud. Uh, please do not kill my hero. If the hero dies, I'm pretty sure it's just instant GG. But with four units, we actually stood a pretty good chance. And I barely had enough food to survive throughout the day. All right, excellent. So the Cyclops has now leveled up, which means he gets some extra damage, some extra health and stuff. Good, of course. That means we need to keep feeding everybody. Oh, the merchant's already here, actually. All right, he's willing to give me some gold if I sell off a plank. Uh, okay, I mean, I, yeah, I actually don't even know if there's something to do with these ingots this early in the game, to be honest, but it's fine, it's fine. Now, I don't expect to survive for much longer, if I'm honest, so I'm going to go ahead and spend a bunch of my stone trying to build out some roads just so we'll have these options going forward into the next run. Do the same thing over here, get this area unlocked. We've now found a village. We could start with extra workers, if I had some extra money to work with. I don't at the moment, but that's fine. You can see later on we'll be able to upgrade over in these directions. There's apparently a priest character over here. All that could be good. And a lot of farms. If you want to start with, let's say, some wheat and stuff um, over here, for example, that could be kind of a thing for us. I will rather start with a little extra stone. There's also this thing here called the Mysterious Stone where we can get orbs, which I think increase, like, just generally a lot of your resources at the beginning of a game. If you have a lot of money, this becomes good for you. I do not have a lot of money, so it's kind of irrelevant. So, day six. What do we got going on over here? Good question. We have some unknown person willing to give me another unit if I had more ingots. Too bad I don't have one more. I'll have to say no to that. Thanks, though. Would have been cool. Okay, we have three planks. Let's go ahead and repair that church. Just go ahead and get that done and out of the way. So, if we have some faith, which is something we have been gradually picking up at our houses, kind of like the gold, we'll be able to start upgrading our hero in some way or another. So, uh, for example, boost up the movement speed of a king so he picks up things faster. Don't really care. Getting an upgrade for the hero could be kind of nice. I don't really have enough uh, faith to do that. That's another currency down over here. Basically, some of these buildings you may have seen just now, for example, there was a gold coin over the sawmill. The king wanders over here, he picks it up, and oh, lo and behold, we get three more gold. Well, thank you. That's, that's very nice. Yeah, that's basically all the king is good for. He just kind of wanders around and picks up the faith, and he picks up things like, you know, the gold. We can go ahead and do this now, though, I guess. Let's go ahead and get the upgrade. So, what do we want here? The shield of mankind. We attack faster, and all units get extra shielding. Or, inspire attacks it in a small area, and enemy, uh, my units that have full um, shields are going to do more damage. I guess I'll do the shield of mankind. I, I, don't, I don't see a problem with that. I mean, realistically, that only boosts up my hero and my fighter's armor, because they're the only two that have any armor right now. But, hey, extra survivability counts for something. That's still useful. Getting dangerously close to getting murdered here. My Cyclops is down. No! Okay, my hero's taking a bit of damage. Come on, get in there. Whoop, okay. <laughs> Cyclops apparently is a bit squishy. Who knew that was going to happen? It's fine, though. All right, we did survive another night. I'm actually kind of shocked. Well, we have eight stone. Let's go ahead and boost up our fighter like so. So now he's going to be a little bit stronger. Decreases the cooldown for his attacks to only 1.4 seconds instead of two. All right, that's pretty good. We can do the same thing over here with the crossbowman. Upgrade you, and now you're going to be firing off with two projectiles. Oh, dear. And here comes a boss. All right, after you survive for a certain number of days, a boss is going to arrive in this case is a Goblin King. Now, I'll be honest, I don't feel like I'm going to be able to deal with this. He's going to keep spawning some little guys, which is going to distract all of my units, and they're going to hit all the wrong stuff when they really need to be hitting the Goblin King himself. 
Because if this guy gets to nighttime and starts moving really fast, he's going to be impossible for me to deal with. Uh, no, my fighter's down. We're definitely going to lose. All right, I'm going to go ahead and spend some money real quick to just plant down another tree. So we'll start with a little bit more wood, and I'm just going to have to accept my fate. So there goes my hero, and as a result, we have no choice but to accept that we have been defeated. We lost on day seven with nine glory. And we get to take back all of our gold coins that we uh, kept at the end of the night, which we'll be able to use to upgrade our character. So I only get 17, but this now leads me into my next day, which uh, I'll do as soon as, you know, the king appears here. There we go. So, uh, can I afford any upgrades? I really doubt it with only 17 coins, but I don't regret my decisions. I think we overall were okay. So let's go ahead and jump back into this. And oh, lo and behold, this we do keep awesome. all of the um, infrastructure that I was talking about. This is where the progression becomes kind of important. So we're gonna go ahead and place down a house immediately, plus a couple of these lumber yards and taverns and stuff. So we're gonna be boosting up our economy just a little bit faster than last time, but overall, a lot of the same stuff needs to happen. We need to place down a quarry so we can get more stones, so we can upgrade our capacity, so blah, blah, blah. The build order is basically the same, but because we're starting with more resources, we go a little bit faster than last time. All right, day two has come, and now we get to choose another unit. It's kind of randomized what we get. Skeleton, Shaman, Rune Scribe. Uh, for the heck of it, let's go ahead and choose the Rune Scribe. I've never played with this guy before. I have no idea what he does. Looks like he shoots some little lightning bolts. Uh, okay, I think they chain? Yeah, all right. So if there's lots of enemies coming in all close together, this guy might get a little bit of extra value. Without that, I don't know. Let's go ahead and get myself the uh, fighter, and we'll go ahead and get ourselves the crossbowman as well. So, cool. Now we've got all these guys back in position. So we're actually already at four units, and it's only day two. Just kind of showing how we've kind of scaled up in power a bit. And the faster you get your units, obviously, is good, because the sooner you can start feeding them, the sooner they can start leveling up and getting more powerful. Let's see. I think I'll go ahead and place down the gold mine. So now another job we'll be able to do is start mining some gold ore, which is important so I can upgrade the storage of my castle yet again, so I can get more workers, so I can boost my economy, so I can blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Okay, now that I have two gold, let's go ahead and do that. And that means we want to focus probably more of my efforts on the wood. That said, getting the wall upgrade would be kind of nice. That would definitely increase my survivability by a lot. Uh, it's kind of a trade-off here. Do I want to be going hard on the stone, or do I want to be going hard on the wood? Uh, it kind of depends on how much longer I think I'm going to be able to survive. Since I do have enough gold, though, I will come over here to the village and get this upgraded, so now we'll be able to get some extra workers when we start. Get 500 gold! We'll be able to have even more starting workers. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous about if we can survive this right now. We'll see. Um, if there's any time for the rune scribe to be good, it's right now when all these units are clustering together. Actually? Yeah, that kind of worked. Okay, well, we're gonna have 10 stones, so let's try building up the walls as shown over here, and I think this is gonna be boosting me up a fair bit for all my units. So now that they're stronger, maybe we can survive tonight. There are some other things we'll be able to build that could be useful. Um, I don't know if we have access to this right now. Yeah, we do, the siege camp. If I get myself a whole bunch of planks, we could start getting some siege engines. That might not be a bad plan, to be honest. So, let's go over here and build the siege camp, just so I can be able to build engines. Now, if I click on this, I can start getting some ballista, if I have a lot more gold, as well as some planks. Also, catapults and trebuchets. Very expensive, but could be very helpful. But, here comes the boss, so... Mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we can beat this guy again. He's kind of out of range of the rune scribe, which is kind of the problem. Um, maybe I can move the rune scribe a little further forward and he can start zapping them. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he just zaps the little gobbos and that's how he can start hitting the king. We actually might beat this guy. Well, what do you know? Okay, that kind of worked. Bye-bye, gobbo king. Oh, he's, he's, he's dead and some little goblins popped out. Were they just like... Were they just like two kids standing on top of each other with a trench coat? Because that's what it feels like. Let's go ahead and pick up some of that money and then open up a chest, which is going to have a reward inside of it, I hope. We can get either Metal Mage extra damage for magic uh, users with shields, which I don't think mine have, so that's probably not going to be good. Hungry Shield, um, gain extra power for five seconds when blocking an attack, or extra piercing for our range units as well as our melee units. Hmm... Um, I think I'll go with the metal arrows, and hopefully that's the right call. Okay, a bunch of our units are gonna level up here, which is great. Looks like the crossbowman, by the way, likes the berries, I think, so maybe he's getting twice as much experience as the rest. I could be wrong on that, but eh, all right, either way, that's fine. So, cool, we've now got some upgrades there, and I'm just a couple stone away from being able to upgrade my fighter, so at least he'll be able to do even more damage. 
Oh gosh, we're being attacked by a bunch of raptors. Oh no! <laughs> I don't want to get attacked by raptors! It's actually fine. The more enemies that we kill, the more glory we gain every day. So, I mean, technically speaking, it's good to be fighting as many enemies as you can. In fact, at the end of the game, um, what you're going to end up doing is start increasing the difficulty of the game intentionally. So you can farm out more glory a little bit faster. By the way, I don't even know if we're going to survive this. I don't have enough food for everybody. But while I've got all this extra glory, now's a good time to go ahead and fund some expansions. Uh, before we get reset, right? So I might as well keep that for future runs. I think we actually can survive this night, though. This this seems reasonable. This is fine. The only real problem being that I'm not feeding all my people, because I didn't prioritize that, because I was trying to work on a dang ballista. Oh, well. What's this? A witch has come to grace me with her presence. Oh, hello, cute little witch. Okay, well, we can get a first free upgrade. Passive skills for my units. Might as well boost up the Rune Scribe? Eh, maybe hang on. Taunt monsters within a radius. They go after him instead of everyone else. Or let's just go ahead and pick up the armor for the unit above. Boom. Now, technically, then, um, if I swap these guys around like this, this means my Rune Scribe would have armor, which means if I had gone for that Metal Mage thing, this unit actually would now be able to do a lot more damage. All right. Now, let's go ahead and build up our first ballista right over here. And this thing's now going to start shooting consistent little ballistas over here, which does a little bit of knockback and damage. Um, kind of provides me a little bit of extra defense in this area. Not sure it's going to be enough, if I'm honest. Oh, gosh. Please don't die, Rune Scribe. I love you. Huh. Frick me. It actually worked. <laughs> well, again, I feel like I might as well try to get some additional expansions out of the way while we can. So let's get up over here. And we can do another one, I think, over here. And then... What is this, an enemy? Provoke this monster to attack tonight. Sure, let's go ahead and provoke some extra monsters. I don't know if I want to provoke two extra monsters, so we won't do that, but the idea behind that being, again, more enemies attack means more glory to be gained. All right, what do we have over here? Hello, we have um, either a demon or something. Cartographer. Who's attacking today? The Dryad is going to be attacking me today. Okay. You're a cartographer? Okay, I, I thought for sure you were a tiefling or something. Well, let's go ahead and expand up this direction, since this is the best I've done. This is going to open up a uh, quest of some sort. Kill monsters with a special kind of damage. Do this, and we will get some rewards. Well, I don't think I have those particular things, but okay. Challenge a mini-boss with 250 health. I don't think I'm able to do that really right now, but thank you. I don't know, I'm just looking through this and deciding, do I want to spend a lot of gold on something? I mean, if I can get a bit more gold, we could go for this whole mysterious orb thing. Kind of depends if I think I can survive tonight, which is not looking good right now. Holy crud. And we did indeed provoke a whole load of skeletons. Right, I forgot about that. Okay, but you know what? The crossbowman's actually making pretty short work of them. Actually, I'm doing shockingly well right now. I, I don't know how this is happening. Day 11. Wow. I, I can't remember if you can only play for like two weeks before you automatically have to start over again, but oh well. Um, so 175 gold, huh? Suddenly seems very possible to go ahead and get this mysterious orb upgrade for every future run. Of course, we're getting pretty swarmed over here. There we go. That's 175. Let's go ahead and do this and just lock that on in. I need one more plank, by the way, and then we can get ourselves another ballista. I think you only can ever have two, but having one firing on both sides would do a little bit of knockback and just kind of protect me a smidge against my enemies. I don't know if the Rune Scribe is going to survive this one. Ooh, ah, bah, 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 got kind of close. I cannot believe we're still alive. This is amazing. All right, let's go ahead and build that extra ballista. And there it is. Now I got two ballista. Hooray! So who's attacking me today? Leech Mothers at level 11. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Look at all these leech things. Gross, leave me alone. Well, while I have the opportunity, since I've got 50 some um, glory right now, let's go ahead and fund an expansion this direction, which ah, I thought I was gonna do more than that. Um, ah, we need 75 to get over here. I need to get myself like a port or something for fish. More food options would certainly be nice. I'm basically just trying to unlock as much as we can because who knows if we're going to get this much glory again in the future. What do we have here, though? Upgrade a fisherman to start with some fish in future runs. Uh, just one fish? I'm not sure that's worth 100 gold right now. Ooh, my rune scribe is losing his armor pretty quick. I'm not sure we're going to be okay over here. All right, swap you out with the fighter. Fighter, please, slash faster. Kill. Ah, oh, there goes the rune scribe. And there goes the fighter, and I think I'm about to go down. Ah, there we go. All right, we finally got overwhelmed. It was bound to happen eventually. Literally. We only get to take back 18 coins this time, because, again, I spent almost all of it, but it's fine. It's fine because uh, we're about to have a much stronger third run. First, let's go over here, though. And do I want to spend some money boosting up my character in some way? Yes, I want to get greed, so I get more coins after every run. 
Doesn't exactly help me, like, right now, but it helps me uh, kind of scale up a little bit faster later on. Look at all these extra <laughs> plots I'm starting with now. And we get to start with some extra resources thanks to that orb. I guess I can only start with one free resource. That's what the orb does. Oh. Okay. It's not quite as exciting as I thought it was going to be, but that's fine. Hit OK. Get over here. Upgrade the castle immediately and get myself an extra... Oops, I need to get the tavern first. Hang on. Doop. And then get myself an extra uh, house immediately. Then a lumber yard. And now I should have three workers already on day one. So, day two, the old man comes by. Cyclops, skeleton, death priest. Let's take a death priest. That sounds fun. Looks like the death priest creates some, like, creepy hands or something. Okay, that's fine. Let's get ourselves a crossbowman then who can take advantage of the fact that the enemies are all stuck. Also, notice that our crossbowman looks like he gives cover automatically anyway. Well, that's helpful. Let's go ahead and swap you out so you give even more armor to the fighter or something then. So yeah, if the witch comes by, you can actually kind of get a permanent passive upgrade, I think. And then once he levels up, it boosts up how effective the secondary ability is. Oh, okay. So the more you can survive until day nine and keep meeting the witch, the better. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the church, by the way, and I think I will this time go ahead and boost up the speed of the king. Because to be honest, he's not been picking up the golden stuff fast enough for my tastes. Look at all this stuff just sitting here, with the king doing absolutely nothing. What is with this king? How lazy is this monarch? Hmm, I can sell resources and actually get two ingots this time. <sighs> Ooh, uh, I'm going to sell two of these planks off then. Sure, why not? And with two ingots, we can do some stuff. Uh, let's go to my death priest, for example. So I can go ahead and just upgrade the unit straight out, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So now the character can, I think, raise three minions? Yeah, now it's a one-star unit. So by spending some ingots now, we can raise three zombies every time we attack enemies. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, there we go. All right, so every time we do this, some little zombies are running around, and if they make contact, they do a tiny amount of damage. All right, not a, not a lot. Um, honestly, that's... Eh, okay. I was expecting more from you, Death Priest. Even so, we did survive, so it's fine. And here comes the Goblin King. That's fine, though. This time we have a, uh, a Death Priest who can just keep hitting him with the creepy hands. And spawn these little Zomboos. Also, by the way, let's go ahead and get those walls that I wanted, so that boosts up all of my stats for my units. And you know something? I'm gonna go ahead and try provoking... Oh, the mini-boss left. Oh, wait, no, there it is. Let's go ahead and provoke the mini-boss. Might as well. I mean, once this guy's down, we don't have to fight any additional units for the rest of the day, so we might as well, like, stay busy and stuff. All right, Goblin King, you are down for the count. What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? We get Hourglass. All right, reduce cooldowns. Uh, I can see that actually being pretty good for me. A hungry Shield on the Metal Mage. So yeah, let's go ahead and pick up the Hourglass. That seems pretty good. All right, so run in there and do damage. He's got 250 health, you say. I think we can actually deal with that. There we go. We dealt with the mini-boss. Why? I don't know. I think it just gets me some extra glory or something. Mm, don't lose the death priest. Okay, move you. Do something over there. Can I just move you around? Right. Gonna move you around. Wait. Uh, uh, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the micromanagement gets a little annoying. I would like to be able to have like more than four units, to be honest. That'd be fun. And here comes the witch. All right, with the witch, we can go ahead and get into one of those passive upgrades. And this is going to be a key milestone for progression. Um, revive one dead undead. Revives one dead undead. How exactly is that supposed to work? Whatever, we're going to take it anyway. What is this? Oh, interesting. Hold on. By defeating the mini boss, it looks like I actually unlocked the farm as a resource outpost, and now it's going to be sending me some wheat. So we have passive wheat generation all of a sudden. Oh, I wasn't expecting that, but I'm not unhappy about it. Let's go ahead and get the gates, which would get me that extra space for units. So now if I could get a fifth unit, I would happily do so. The monk is kind of what I would like to get. I'm going to need more wheat for that, though. I think I'm about to get my third, but we're still just barely shy. What happens if I build a portal? I don't know, actually. Let's try it. Build a portal. What do we do? Choose your reward. Sure. What do I get? Uh, I can get a halfling, a satyr, or a werewolf. Oh, cool. I can get my fifth unit right now, then. Nice. Um, let's go for the halfling. Halfling can be fine, and we'll go ahead and place you back over here. And actually, you know what? We'll swap around. The death priest can be... Actually, the death priest kind of needs to be far forward, I think. Let's do something like this, and we'll give the death priest some armor. And now we're just shooting aggressively at everything around us. Yeah, there we go. 
Yeah, we're definitely able to handle a lot more enemies than we were used to. That's great. This is good. Okay, yeah, having that fifth unit really makes a huge difference. Okay, we've got enough boards and ore that if I want to build a catapult, we could. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, cool. He does AoE damage and starts hitting things around him. Okay, I mean, it's not like it does an absolute ton, um, but it's enough to throw a little bit more DPS on the board. Then again, this is where we died last time with all these leeches and stuff, and I feel like that's probably about to happen again. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're getting completely swarmed over here. Fighter, no! Okay, fighter's down, the hero's about to go down, and that's the end of that. Okay, so we didn't make it any further than last time. However, we did walk away with a lot more gold that I can use for upgrades. Looks like every time you upgrade, it does get a little bit more expensive. Interesting. Um, well, we can go ahead and keep boosting up things like our greed, just so we can, you know, enjoy a lot of extra cash. I mean, that's still pretty good. And then we'll go ahead and boost up some of our damage and our shields and stuff, I guess. I don't know. But I think that's probably a good place for us to end this video. I've given you a good idea what this game has to offer, at least as of this early access demo. Obviously, a lot more has to follow. I think my biggest criticism of the game is mostly that the build order feels kind of, uh, you know, along a particular streamline. But, as you notice, the further along in the game we got and the more resources we started with, the more flexibility I had in my approach and my agenda to try and eke out a bit of extra progression. My other problem is, once we've gotten to this point of the progression where I've unlocked most of the roads and stuff like that, all you can do is just... Well, keep doing the same thing over and over again to farm out gold to ramp up your hero. And it's like, that's not going to be the most engaging form of progression while we wait for, you know, the witch and other things to unlock our full potential. So, there is some cool aspects of the game, for sure. I just would like to see it get built upon in a big way. Nonetheless, though, Super Fantasy Kingdom, fun game. I'm looking forward to seeing where it's going to continue developing. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell. And I will see you guys next time.